Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is Minister Paul. I'm in Northern California. I'm a watchman on the wall for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's May 1st, 2015. May Day. 11.53 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's Friday. I must share this in obedience as a witness to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whom I love, serve, and obey. He is my everything. He's the reason I live and move and have my being. He's the very breath that I breathe. He's my Adonai. He's my Redeemer. He's my Father. Two nights ago on Wednesday, it was about 11 p.m., somewhere around there. I had laid to go to bed and was just sitting there praying two nights ago. And I closed my eyes and I saw something incredible. And I've tried to duplicate it here with some pictures here, but I don't think I can. What I saw was a magnificent, bright light. I mean magnificent bright light in a vision. I was awake and it was coming towards earth. And let me be very clear. There was no fear. I've thought and prayed on this for two days. Something big is coming. And it was bright. It was almost as if it was, there was something holding it back. Almost like it was being eclipsed like this. But it couldn't contain this light. I saw it, saints, with my own eyes and I bear a witness for Jesus Christ right now to the whole world and anybody willing to listen but it was coming towards earth so again the Lord took me to 928 we're gonna have a, a solar eclipse on 928 that will be seen by Jerusalem now, I told the Lord I would be obedient and share this. And that there'd be confirmations coming in. And I think what the Lord is saying, look, I'm revealing things, Amos 3, 7. And I'm telling you, they're coming. I'm telling you, this is the season. I'm showing you in the sky. I'm showing you with prophecy playing out worldwide. I'm declaring from the heavens and the earth what is to come. And I hear the Lord right now saying, are you prepared? Are you ready? Do you even know? Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? Uploading this in obedience and I know that I know that I know confirmations will come forward on this. It's obedience to the living God. Amen. Chris Potter here. Want to talk to you today about Nibiru Planet X Nemesis, Destroyer, Herbaculus, whatever you want to call it for the moment. And how really it's possible to create huge large underground tunnels and we really do have the technology now suffice to say if at the highest levels of government all over the planet politicians and government officials are very interested in boring and creating underground facilities now I don't think it's to keep us safe from nuclear war the only scenario that makes sense is there's an incoming body. 
out in our solar system that has the potential to wipe out most of the planet's surface. Okay? It would make sense why they are making these tunnels. Now, the first thing I'm showing here, look at this guy right here. That's a dude. Of course, this thing is going to freaking jump all over the place. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Let's go ahead and freeze on you. Okay, so here, uh, here's the dude, okay, and here's the tunnel boring machine. Okay, look at the circle, okay? Now, that's just real simple. It's a big, big machine. Okay, boom. Here's the next one. Looks like I'm going to have to do this on all of them. Here is a tunnel boring party where all the folks are happily drilling a large tunnel, another machine. Folks, these things are enormous. How do we not have the ability to create underground facilities? These things are huge. Do you know what they do? It melts. It melts the rock in front of it and creates a perfect glass cylinder. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool, you know, that they have the ability to go and hide while the rest of us are going to get scorched. But that's fine. So there's one in action, okay? That's the English tr uh, Channel tunnel drill, you know, back in the day. Here's an underground facility. So they actually exist, you know, they're not bull. Okay, here's an underground facility that has jets in it. Military jets. Oh, but no, we don't have underground facilities. Okay, here's one right here. This is a secret one where the guy was in the semi and took a picture. He wasn't supposed to. So that's when it's like, whoa, dude. Okay, look at this thing. Look at that enormous tunnel. I mean, come on. Look at that enormous area bored out, it looks like, by two of the little thingies. They're not little, these two huge... I'm just showing you pictures. I'm a nobody, man. I'm a freaking nobody. Another tunnel, bored out tunnel. Another facility where people can drive. It's a highway. Okay, there's a ship coming out of the side of the freaking mountain. But we don't have the technology to create underground facilities that are enormous. So look at these machines, man. This is a nuclear-powered one. NTBLM, I think that's what they're called. Look at that. Holy crap. Hey, just do a search for underground. I mean, these things are enormous, folks. They've been doing this for years. And I know it's not just for Nibiru. It's for real, like, you know, underground tunneling for sewage and water and power, right? And also for resources and uh, materials and rocks and minerals, etc. Right? Okay, I understand that. But why all of a sudden are we at high gear all over the planet for the last four or five years to create as many of these facilities as we can? Here's some of the patents. Man, this stuff's real. It's not bull. Here's another patent on Google. US 3885832A. All right, and now, okay, this is really cool. This is the offer, uh, Office of International Programs from the U.S. Department of Transportation, and it shows basically how underground tunneling safe driving is all over the world. Folks, we have the technology. Look at this. The technology is there. They are hiding. Okay, that's where they're going to go. We're going to stay on top. They're going to be all fresh and happy inside, okay? And they think that, you know, the deluge that will happen, the second deluge, is not going to affect them. Another underground highway, okay? But no, they don't exist. Another one. More entrances to tunnel highway systems. Here's another one, and another one, and there's a repeat one I had before. So, just a couple pictures on machines, facilities that are underground, as well as little highway systems and patents. I understand, again, that it is not all for hiding 
the jerks from the incoming many solar system. However, we do know, you know, it's for rocks and materials, and minerals, etc., and sewage and water and power, right? We understand that for drilling for whatever materials materials that we need. But then why all of a sudden are billions and trillions of dollars going into it the last four or five years? Okay, and the money investigation, the actual money transactions, Bob Fletcher has in a four-hour video incoming. All right? He has the full investigation. I think you should actually uh, check his video, his DVD out. Buy it. It's 24 bucks. I don't even know the guy. I'm trying to sell his DVD for him. He has the full investigation, the full four hour, the transactions, the pictures, the documentation. He has an extremely huge following. He is, he's got people that are with the Senate Intelligence Committee, Congressional and Senate and, and Intelligence Investigations that he does. He doesn't want to put his name on such a crappy subject like Nibiru or Planet X, but he did. Because he believes that this is, this is real. And that they, the governments of the world, are building facilities to hide their happy butts in when this thing comes in and takes us out. There's my video. Have a great day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is Minister Paul, a watchman on the wall for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's roughly 9.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on May 3rd, 2015, a Sunday. I have to share a very important warning, a watchman warning with you. I wanted to put this off till tomorrow. The Holy Spirit won't let me. I don't know if you watched the video before this. You just go one back where I was awakened with a dog bark at 3.30 in the morning. And then I talked about uh, the great shaking coming. And then I read from uh, Ezekiel 33 about being a watchman and how the Lord had spoke to me and said uh, the earth's mantle it's just one video back on today's date 5-3 the earth's mantle <clears throat> I haven't talked to Pastor Larry in about a week but he's been blessed with a, a new building and um, I went down to go uh, take communion at his church and uh, and get some special prayer before I go off to Texas on Friday and he began to preach under the anointing prophetically and began to confirm the exact same things that I shared with you with with me and my wife this morning the exact same things I literally was just staring at him in amazement and the Spirit of the Lord was all throughout this church I invite you all to come in there so we'll talk about that more later so this is what the Lord is saying tonight be prepared he said warn my people America is under judgment a great shaking is coming and we're gonna go to the confirmation here this is pastor Larry okay first we'll play mine then we'll play pastor Larry's please please Take this very seriously. This is me explaining me waking up at 3.30 in the morning to a dog barking. This morning, on this day, I was sleeping deeply, and I mean deeply, and I heard my dog Ruby bark. It was a loud warning bark. While I was sleeping, I heard it, and I was instantly awake, and instantly I started to... Okay, you hear that? Dog barking, instantly awake. And then I go on, and I talk about the earthquake, and Ezekiel 33 here as being a watchman, and then hearing earth mantle. I'll, I'll put a link to all of this in case uh, people are interested. So I talked about a great shaking coming, and I showed an earthquake in Texas. Uh, and then I was talking about the earth's mantle and gave a link to it. <clears throat> now I want to go the same day. These, this is where we're at in prophecy. The, the same day 
this is confirmed by my own pastor the same day. Now listen to what he says. We haven't talked in a week. He was also awoken last night. But in his dream, it was a, a, a wolf or a coyote howling. And then he says a great shaking is coming under a prophetic anointing. And then he reads from Ezekiel 33. And, and then he says, well, let's start at verse 7. 33, 7. And he stares right at me in the church. Stares right at me. 3, 3, 7. So now let's go to his confirmation. Remember what I just played on mine today. Now let's go to his. Okay, so same exact thing. Woken up to a, a wolf howling. In his case, mine was a dog barking. And he was instantly awake and he begins to pray. Now let's go to 31 minutes and 5 seconds. I'm going to put links to both. But, I mean, we must bear witness of this stuff. Two men of God on the same day getting the same messages. thing at the time he was saying that when we were inside church praising God a few earthquakes did hit right here in California where at San Francisco California there was a 3.6 this is the Bay Area of California right at the about the uh, within 10 minutes of the time he was given this prophetic word and then another one came in and then Arizona and then another one up north here north of where I live so one two three in California since he gave that message so what you have here in closing is two men of God operating in a prophetic office receiving the same dream the same message the the same telling to give the same warning with earthquakes occurring 
while we're both in the same church. Take this to the Lord in prayer. Because like it says in the scriptures, the blood is not on our hands. That the blood is not on our hands. So, look, we need to start taking this stuff seriously. I mean, seriously. Sure. Hello, child of God. The manifestation of prophetic events for this coming year are a very exciting study. It reminds me of the many Bible prophecies scattered throughout the Old Testament for over 5,000 years that were manifested on the day Jesus was born. And then many more were manifested as he walked on earth, and then many, many more the day he was crucified. The earthly life of the Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled well over 300 prophecies. And later, when Israel became a nation in one day, there were at least 10 prophecies filled for that one day, May the 14th, 1948. And there are many other prophecies being manifested in our generation, just as Jesus said it would. Let me paint a physical picture to illustrate a spiritual concept. When a building contractor is building a house, he has to plan the end before he even begins. Then he draws his plans for the construction of the building because most of the structural parts are hidden behind the outside finished walls. Once his plans and drawings are made, then he schedules the timely work of the subcontractor. Let's take that example and apply it to the coming year of possible prophetic events. Almighty God has a plan. He can see the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end and everything in between. When Almighty God spoke through the Old Testament prophets like Ezekiel, God was speaking out in the past what he saw happen in the future. God spoke through many prophets to say in the last days Israel will be restored as a nation. Our prophetic time clock for this generation is Israel. And our quest is to find out what Almighty God said would happen in this generation, the generation that saw Israel become a nation. I am posting this video in mid-January of 2015, and it will be exciting to see day to day what end-time prophecies are being manifested. I'm not going to talk about the rapture at all or anything about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and when he will return. Jesus plainly told us that no one knows, and we must be ready all the time. I'm ready both for my death and the return of Jesus, and both times have been hidden from me. Let's lay out a timeline for this generation and the possible manifestation of prophecies using a construction timeline. Almighty God's original instruction to Israel was for Israel to be on a 50-year business plan to succeed as a nation. That is, to work the farms for six years and then forgive all debts and rest the farmland one year for 49 years. And then on the 50th year, let their land rest an additional year. And then redistribute the land back to the original tribes that owned it. They also must free the slaves and all debts are forgiven. Israel did not constantly obey the business plan. So the business plan became a plan of judgment and a penalty against Israel. For example, Israel was turned over to Babylon for punishment for 70 years. The 70 years were determined by the 70 Jubilee years that Israel did not celebrate. Jesus said that not one jot or tittle would fall from the law until it was all complete. But Israel has lost track of when the Jubilee years are supposed to be practiced. 
And solving these mysteries is a key to plotting out this year's prophecies. Because many of you have seen my other videos on the subject of the four blood red moons and the Smith Nut years, I'll just summarize and point out that on the last day of the Smith Nut year in 2001, the stock market crashed. 7%. That was the first warning. And exactly seven years later came the second warning crash. And that was 778 points. And as we approach the 29th of Elul and expect a stock market crash exactly seven years after the last one, we fall into the time of tetrad, of four blood red moons. We've had blood red moons before, but these blood red moons fall on four Jewish Sabbath holy days. So prophecy students see the handwriting of judgment on the wall of time. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Christians worldwide entertain many different views about what's going to happen during the millennium, and you are welcome to express your views in the comments section below. Almighty God's building plan is to have Satan cast into the bottomless pit and have a thousand years of peace on earth somehow and some way. With world peace as the end plan, he is building a building of world peace. And in his plan, what does he do to remove the wicked, hate-filled, war-minded, religious crazies of this world now? In my opinion, he's drawn a line in the sand when he said, Israel is still my bride. If you fight against Israel, Almighty God will destroy you. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. Even if Israel sins as much as every other nation on earth, their sin will still be judged by Almighty God alone, and not by the UN, and not by Russia, or the EU, or the Muslims, or anybody else on the face of this planet. It seems to me that Almighty God is drawing the enemies of Israel into wars against each other, as he said he would, and then drawing enemies into wars against Israel to be destroyed. Ezekiel 38 prophesies about the Gog and Magog war which ends with a world-shaken earthquake on the mountains of Israel. It also describes what could be airburst of a meteor storm over Russia, Iran, Turkey, and several other nations burning away most of their infrastructure. An airburst meteor storm is also one more thing, which would cause Joel 2 to be manifested. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, and, as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, 
And there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. When we look at world events, Benjamin Netanyahu on October the 1st said he would attack Iran's nuclear weapons program. As soon as Israel attacks Iran, the Middle East will go into conflict, oil prices will skyrocket, and the drunken sailor U.S. economy, U.S. dollar is going to hit the ground. You need to prepare. I need to prepare. Israel will attack Iran. Iran will respond. The whole Turkey and uh, Saudi Arabia and all of those nations will be affected, even if it doesn't become the Gog and Magog War. Have you noticed the pattern of signs here? The four blood red moons are like a blinking red light, and soon this moon will turn completely red. It seems as if Almighty God is clearing and renovating the land so that he can build in peace and then rest for a thousand years. Joel prophesied about it. Then Jesus prophesied about it in Matthew. Then Peter preached on the day of Pentecost the words of Joel, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before that great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Then there's Revelation 6. He opened the sixth seal, and I looked, and behold, there was a great earthquake. And this lines up with Ezekiel 39, the Gog and Magog war with Israel. Almighty God sends a great earthquake to the earth, and buildings fall down all over the earth. Mountains fall down all over the earth. The whole earth trembles. And of course, in Revelation, the sun became black as sackcloth, and the moon became like blood. This also lines up with Joel chapter 2. And the stars of the sky fell to earth as a fig tree sends its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. Now this also sounds like a meteor storm over the earth. The sky vanished like a scroll that is being rolled up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. There you go. That is Ezekiel 39 and 40. This also confirms Joel's end-time prophecies. And I haven't even explained what happens during Daniel's 70th week. And then we move to Revelation chapter 8, where a third of the sun and the third of the moon are darkened. Let's just ask, what do you think Almighty God's goal is in sending all these horrible problems to earth? I believe that most of mankind will have to be exterminated before the Lord Jesus Christ begins his rule on earth for a thousand years of peace. These times were prophesied by the Lord Jesus Christ. When you see these things happen, the things going on in Jerusalem and Israel and Zion worldwide, when you see these things manifesting, look up for your redemption is drawing near and start praying. Pray hard. Almighty God can see Satan totally defeated and being punished in the lake of fire. The Lord Jesus Christ defeated Satan on the cross, and now we must each defeat Satan with the blood of the Lamb, the words of our testimony, and die in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is, to love the Lord Jesus Christ more than we love our own life. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke to each of us concerning these end-time events in the New Testament book of Luke. Heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. The instructions the Lord Jesus Christ gave us is that we should pray that we are able to stand before the Son of Man. My friend, no one is able to stand before the Son of Man unless he is washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are none righteous, no, not one. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Let us pray now together and ask Almighty God to forgive our sin and wash us in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just follow after me in prayer, but pray with your own faith and your own sincerity. Father God, that's right, just pray in faith after me. Father God, 
I ask you now to forgive all of my sin and wash me in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and make me holy unto you. Baptize me now in the Holy Spirit and give me more power to resist temptations. I acknowledge that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for my sin and is soon to return. I forgive all of those people that I have resented or hated and I receive from you the free gift of salvation. I dedicate my life and commit my spirit to you. I ask you now to keep me strong in the time of testing and help me to stand before the Son of Man. I receive that as done. Amen. Thank you for praying with me, child of God. 